It was suspenseful. <laughs> suspenseful. If you had to define this in one word, what would it be? Um, tense. <laughs> tense, very good. It was tense. Actually, he's, uh, Will is a master. Well, my name is Andy Muschietti. I'm not a host, as you will notice. Um, I'm a filmmaker. I'm a very good friend of Will. Uh, Will Eubank, the director. <coughs> uh, I was asked to, to host this uh, Q&A, so that's what I'm doing. I'm very proud of this. I'm sorry. What was that? Who said what? All right. So um, that's how, I, yeah, so it was five years ago I met, uh, I came to LA. I'm from South America, I'm Argentinian. Um, I made a bunch of movies. And um, when I, I, after I did my first movie, I came uh, to LA. And of the few people I met that I cherish, uh, there was Will. I went to a screening of a movie called The Signal and the director came up to me and said, man, you're so cool. I love your movie so much. I love your movie Mama so much. This movie, The Signal, is a homage to Mama. I still don't believe that, but uh, I take it. I'll take it. <laughs> Mama's back. I don't think all the movie was a homage, but there's a little bit of that. By the way, I recommend uh, the viewing of The Signal. I love uh, Will's previous movies, which are great, amazing. Uh, so I already tipped my, my hand or my head, I don't know, I, my English is, is not very good, uh, about the presence of the director, Will Eubank. Give it up to him. And the cast. Mamudu Wache. Jessica Henwick. John Gallagher, Jr. And last but not least, Kristen Stewart. Uh, Andy, I love you. Thank you so much for I love you this too, movie. guys. He uh, literally, this is, he, I said, Andy, please, please <laughs> host our Q&A. So this is a huge favor from him. And I, obviously, if you haven't seen the movie It, you should check it out because it's pretty good. But um, I love how about it too? Oh, okay. I really, really love that movie. Oh my God, I, now I'm blushing. <laughs> <laughs> we um, love you. Thank you so much for doing this. Um, well, congratulations for giving us such an amazing film experience. I saw this movie a while ago, like, you know, a few months ago, and it didn't have any visual effects, but I already had a sense of, the, the, you know, the amazing, the amazing storytelling. Uh, you know, the build-up, suspense, scares, and the emotional, you know, uh, uh, Beats and everything, and I really love. I really love this movie. Um, so, tell us a little bit, Will. Let's start with Will. How about starting with the director? Um, how did you How did you start with all this? Um, I honestly, I I got the script, and it was like one of those movies that you just read through so quick. It was simple in its concept. Um, I feel like the simpler an idea is then the more you can give to the complexity of like how you render it. But uh, yeah, I just uh, I read the script super fast because it was that good. And I was like, uh, Brian Duffield wrote it, and he did a great job. And it was like, it was funny, and it was heartfelt, and it was just in a bombastic place at the bottom of the ocean. And I thought that would be um, interesting to try to figure out how to do. So I called my agent. I was like, this is awesome. Put me in the room. <laughs> There's also something um, very unsettling about the bottom of the sea, which is one of the, you know, because it is one of the places in our world that is unexplored. So you can actually, like, pull it off, you know, pull off a science fiction movie that actually is not that far-fetched because it's, um, you know, it's a world that is unexplored. When yeah. You think of that. I think... It's like, yeah, it's there's so you know, it's funny. A lot of people are like, oh, it's the abyss, it's the deep star six, it's Leviathan. That's you know, they true. they That's render it. off that was the, him the whole movie. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I do <laughs> reference a lot of movies, <laughs> but it's you know, it's like, yeah, you gotta make movies about great places, you know, and it's just like because there's two westerns in existence doesn't mean you can't make more, you know. And uh, for me, I just was like, God, to do an underwater movie, I don't know how I'm gonna do that, but that'd be pretty cool to do. And it's a great place to put a struggle and a place of survival and to put a very fragile but also 
um, intense character like Nora Price. So. Yeah, you're segueing to Kristen, but not yet. Okay. <laughs> I have some more <laughs> no, about, about that. Yeah. So uh, speaking of which, because you mentioned other movies, uh, I, I admire you as a filmmaker. You know that Will is not just a director. He does everything. He's like a production designer and a cinematographer, uh, which for someone that just is, you know, like likes films and does film is like, you know, it's like it's, it's something that is pretty awesome that someone like 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 Will can do actually everything. Do you, do you get like do you uh, is it annoying for like production designer and like cinematographers that that you tell them what to do all the time? <laughs> no, honestly, Boyan, our cinematographer, was so good that it's just like. It, to watch him work, it was just bonkers. Um, Naaman Marshall, our production designer, did an amazing job. But yeah, I think for him especially, it was annoying because it was like, ah, oh, it's got to be more like this. It's got to be more, you know, you're constantly pushing. Uh, you were a production designer on your own movie. My own little film, yeah, so it doesn't right. count really. But you still How have annoying. an opinion, you know. Yeah, I would <laughs> fucking hate you if I was like, you know, like working for you. But that's fine because actually you. You're you're actually yeah you, know, you basically storyboard every single shot of a movie. How is it that for for actors? How do actors react when you tell them this is the the scene? This is. Um, I was watching some behind the scenes the other day for Blu-ray, and John was like, "Yeah, Will's crazy. He shoots like 20 different versions of every scene." So <laughs> it was <laughs> it's like a little uppercut. He was like, "Make up your mind, you son of a bitch." <laughs> And yeah, I'm sure. I relate to that. Yeah, they all feel that way. So <laughs> no, because there's a new, there's a whole new world. You you shoot a what movie. Were those storyboards that we looked at. That was sick for a second. Yeah, it was cool. I don't know if it rendered that way, but we had them. Does he show you the storyboards, or the storyboards are there? I don't remember any storyboards. You don't. Yeah. They weren't there. Were so he made them, but he didn't show it to you. No. Oh my god, I saw so. M Dude, there were. Lots and lots, lots of pictures. Yes. Um, some of them coincide with what we did, and some of them don't. But they were definitely all like diving boards. Um, diving but like, board. so many diving boards, dude. Like, <laughs> uh, it, many, 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 many pictures. <laughs> yeah. um, okay, that that settles then. Um, were you prepared for something like that? Because it's a bigger movie than the stuff that you did before. Like, did he, did, were you aware of the of the challenges that that came? Definitely. I mean, sure. to a certain degree, we knew certain things were going to be hard, like the suits and things. But I don't think until the first day of shooting that we knew it was going to be that hard. And the, like, you'd get to a place where you, you knew you were putting the actors into pain, and you were like, okay, I don't know, do I just say it's done, or do we try to do it again? So there was a lot of brutality to trying to make the movie that is not totally like you see it in their face and it's real in the movie but i wasn't really ready sure for that, but so uh, did you they were you 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 face challenges that you hadn't faced before for sure like water for instance yeah water <laughs> suits. like most of most directors that film that make films with water recommend not to shoot in water <laughs> what why did you think it was a good idea to I didn't think water. it was a good idea. I just, I knew I wanted to do it. <laughs> so we just decided to go for it. And honestly, like, we were trying uh, you, to get them thought, to training. Oh, it's going to be fine. And Kristen was like, yeah, I don't, I don't want to learn how to do this. Just put me in the damn thing <laughs> on the day. I don't care. It's going to be so awful. Just do it. So. Mm -hmm. Look, I mean, like, I could have trained more to scuba dive in suits that didn't work. Yeah. But it was like, it just, it was like really scary. <laughs> So like I mean look like let's like shoot it and then hopefully it's on camera because like if we do more of it it, it was, was not like it doesn't bode well for any of us and um, there was no like no amount of preparation that would have gotten us ready to do this though yeah. also it's like we're playing like mechanical engineers there's no like knowledge or their normal motherfuckers being like what is going on I just had a job here I just work here <laughs> like uh, uh, so yeah no I didn't train for that at all it was all it was, I was scared of it. Did you get to that moment where you think you got it, uh, but he, like the director comes and says, uh, well, uh, it's, it's good, but we, we'll do I it again. I didn't get it. <laughs> I wasn't rolling. <laughs> no, definitely not. Uh, no, I just couldn't. I, I, like, uh, specifically for like the submersibles, I just actually was too scared. I would do anything else that he asked me to do mm. all over and over. 
Right. Um, but in terms of going underwater, I wasn't as good at, at it as these guys. I was just scared. I was just like fucking claustrophobic and I couldn't, like I, could, I couldn't deal with that. But that's specific. This was a fucking hellhole for a million other reasons. <laughs> like, I didn't like to go under the water, but like, well, that's, that was the least of it. Yeah, that's, that's a good point. Where does, you know, because it's a, it's, a, it's a story that deals with claustrophobic, like, you know, claustrophobic spaces and restrained spaces and the, the threat of dr dr uh, drowning. Is that in English? Yeah. Yeah, drowning. Yeah. And on top of that, there's creatures. You know, I don't, um, we don't want to spoil too much, but there's creatures. And so there's like the natural disaster kind of thing, and then there's like more. Uh, so all these things pile up. Um, so to to what point? Because I, I know that these things, like working on on sets that actually like let the actor immerse into the you know the 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 the, the, the moment and everything and the, the suit and everything help you like build a character and the moment. But is there like a point beyond which it starts to bother you? Yeah. Is there? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so it distracts you from from doing it. That's for all of you, but let's start with Kristen. Okay. Um, uh, yeah, it was like distractingly horrible. <laughs> but at the same time, like the, we basically made a movie about people trying to survive making a film, and, and then that's what the movie's about. Like, obviously, you know, you, you, you put any sort of traumatic like um, crisis situation against the backdrop dra backdrop of like total darkness where you're like mm -hmm. you're either looking into like space or like the bottom of the ocean or just like the backs of your eyelids and that is scary to not know what is sort of beyond but in terms of making the movie no it was <laughs> really fucked up <laughs> I hated it I don't know like I mean you guys feel the same way it was fucking horrible yeah <laughs> I mean, the suits were so hard to move around in that, like, I don't remember any acting choice yeah, that's I made. What I'm saying. <laughs> like, I just remember being like, "Get to the other side yeah. of the set," <laughs> and, the and look about. like, a, like a, a a human yeah. right. that is capable of moving yeah. around. And Will would be like, "Try it more like this." I'd be like, "Got it," <laughs> but in my head, I'd be like, "Get to the other side <laughs> of the set." It was like the only thing I remember trying to do. <laughs> Yeah, Jessica. no, I agree. I actually, it all just has blended into one in my memory of just like soup time and, and then other life. Um, and I don't really remember any of it, to be honest. <laughs> it's erased, suppressed. <laughs> what well, question again? <laughs> How was your experience with the suit, I guess? <laughs> oh, the suit, right. Diving suit. Just talk your voice smack about cracked the, while saying suit. 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 <laughs> <laughs> I do that very, <laughs> I do that every, um, every day. Well, I, well, yeah, I, it was pretty similar to everyone <laughs> on this panel. But my favorite thing is we're when, not in the suit that not, much. Not long. <laughs> yeah. But my favorite thing was when uh, Vincent Vincent Cassell goes like, "Come on, guys, did you read the script?" Oh, <laughs> really? yeah. yeah, but nobody expected <laughs> that it would be no. so. Oh, You're like a right? wild banshee Frenchman freak. <laughs> <laughs> you, how are you doing this? Yeah. We're Vincent, like, who is oh. not here, literally doing pirouettes. In this. Here's the thing: his Vincent, French, who is right? not here, was literally yeah. like, "Come on, guys." Did you not read the script? Or Go fuck what? yourself. <laughs> he was, but he was hardcore. He was ready. By like to month two, suit. though, he was yeah. definitely like, I'm not getting in the suit. He yeah, no, like, but at the end, his back was fucked. Yeah. Like, and he was like, I don't, I don't like the suit anymore. Yeah. I complained about it one day, and he was, like, he was like, you know how many actors would kill to be where you are? And I was like, oh, my God, you're right. I'll never, I won't complain ever again. And then like two weeks later, he was like, I hate the suit. And I was like, see, it's not so easy, is it? We cannot do anything we want to do, so fuck it. Yeah, same. No, but the suits, like you know, uh, for what for what it's worth, I, t I tell you, all the suffering was worth it. I, those yeah, I suits think. are fucking amazing. I haven't seen uh, that kind of like uh, imagery in a long time in a science fiction movie. With this, like you know, suits are very uh, imaginative. Um, it reminds me of. Uh, I, 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 let me ask you something because I, I I'm old. I, I grew up in South America, but reading some, this French Metal Herland comic books, and there's artists like uh, Ciccioni and uh, Moebius that are very much in the same vein of these kind of, you know, gigantic suits over bulging. Uh, did you draw inspiration sure. from that? Moebius, I'm not sure if I'm saying that right, but yeah. uh, for sure. Like, 
if you see the what's the film where they're talking about the making of the first Dune that never happened? Yeah, yeah. You it's see all of his art, the... which end up ended up he. Uh, Ridley, when he started Alien, took all of his artists. The Jodorowsky, Jodorowsky yeah, version. Jodorowsky. Yeah, Jodorowsky. And uh, I saw that, and I was like, oh, my God, those suits are so cool. And mm -hmm. it, so a lot of inspiration from his world. Um, and, yeah, just tried to draw on that for a lot of the movie, obviously, which you see. But we had a lot of fun with that. The but suits the suits were cool to me because they reminded me of Gundams. Uh, does anybody know what, Gundam. what a Gundam is? Anime. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's like a mecha suit from like a Japanese anime. Anyway, I was mm -hmm. like, that's what really turn me on about those. Such things. a weeboo. <laughs> a little French, a little Japanese, yeah. a little bit of everything. Yeah. Um, let's get serious. Uh, Kristen, <laughs> what attracted you? Uh, from the to Kristen's do it. Uh, no. <laughs> what attracted you of the role of, of, of Nora <laughs> to make um, this movie? Uh, well, when I when I read the script, it was like fairly, it was like pretty roughly drawn. Um, uh, the people that exist in the movie now didn't. They were kind of, uh, yeah, just sort of. Um, they need they needed to be peopled by by like human beings, and I thought it was a really nice sort of like weird starting point, like really fundamental starting point to do like this thing about people that were um, ill-equipped to deal with what they were dealing with, but had somehow brought it upon themselves and were kind of like flailing to figure out who they were while you were also getting to know them because the movie starts in the first five minutes, the whole fucking thing blows up. Right. Um, so you're kind of like going like, what? what's wrong with you? Like, why aren't you very talkative? Why are you funny and weird? Like, why are you, you know, I just thought the whole thing was sort of, um, people like show their true colors and points of like severe weird crisis. Right. Um, and this girl was like, uh, like the whole time I read like the first like 20 or 40 pages and the whole time I was like, what's wrong, dude? Like what's wrong with you? Something has clearly happened. But then this is the person that stands up and actually is kind of like, um, uh, you know, it's not like, a ver it, you know, it's not like a more, it, there's nothing moral about the story. That's what I liked about it. It wasn't about like, oh, I have shit to like, live for, I have a son up there, I've gotta get up there for him. It's like, no, I have fucking nothing. Like, literally nothing, and, mm -hmm. and um, so like, you know, the people that show up for you at the end of the day, some people suck, some people don't. This girl was just kind of like, oh man, um, figured out how to like people in a condensed, mm -hmm. shitty environment. Also, I thought it was cool to tell a story about like traipsing upon shit that you shouldn't be touching, and then, you know, uh, the subsequent repercussions are vast, and um, I don't know. I, I thought like the backdrop of uh, nothingness yeah. was a nice starting point, and I thought that I, I really love working with singular voices that are weird and and finding themselves. And I thought Will had done a really great movie, and was just sort of like our first meeting. I was like, yeah, I'll fucking hang out with you for a couple months and do something fucking weird, and. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> yeah, and I hadn't done a big movie for a while, so I was like, I gotta do this thing. <laughs> and I'd Try never done it. a big movie, so it was a match made <laughs> in heaven. Yeah, that was pretty much it. That's great. Uh, I pick on the on the fact that you know you mentioned the that the story like kicks in immediately without knowing anything about the characters, which is great. Um, uh, and also, I agree. Like there, you know, it's a movie more about the characters that are dealing with loss more than you know something to live for. Um, and um, there's a deal about selflessness, I think. There's a, some kind of arc that throws a lot of the characters into sacrifice. We can't really spoil this because this is going to be streamed uh, for people who don't, didn't see the movie. Are but we there on is TV right now? We're on TV. Oh, yeah. What the fuck are you talking about? <laughs> We're somewhere. <laughs> We're somewhere. <laughs> so we can't give it up. But I think it was masterfully, you know, that the fact that, you know, certain, uh, you know, beats of, Backstory or like thrown in there when the when the action already started. I have a Mamudu. I have a question for you, sure. which is uh, it's a, a very de detailed. You know, it's a very subtle like beat in the in the story when uh, first first scene with Kristen is fucking amazing. Have you when when you were shooting it? Did you did you did you think it, w it was going to be so spectacular? You know, I haven't seen it yet. Oh my I god! Yeah, I know I haven't seen it. Yet. What did it feel like? <laughs> 
Okay, it's amazing. Oh, cool. It's spectacular. Well, well, you're specifically asking the entire scene? No. Wait, I'm you didn't just watch the movie right now? <laughs> I, just mentioned, I just mentioned that the, the, the opening scene is spectacular, and it, you know, it immediately throws the audience into, like, this is going to be a ride, a yeah, thrill yeah. ride. Uh, but I remember a moment uh, where, you know, you're, like, just, like, trying to solve the next step with Kristen, and, you, and she asks your name, Rodrigo. She doesn't seem to remember you or notice, and you said, "Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. you're Nora. Yeah. I, I, you're, you know, I know you." Right. Is there a is is that a hint of a backstory? Is there a, like a, a some sort of like love attraction? Yeah, I imagine so. I imagine it was probably yeah. like he like noticed this person across, you know, and she seemed very solitary. And there's like a just like a, wh wh who is that? Who is that person who doesn't really you know keeps to herself? And you know maybe it's like polite, but yeah, not not much further than that. But just like oh yeah, I wonder who that is, and like found out more about her just by being aware and present whenever she was around. But uh, is he uh, is Rodrigo in love with her? Yeah, he's in love. Yeah, <laughs> that's what I wanted to hear. <laughs> yeah, I know. You got the answer. You look. <laughs> It's just dragging it out of... I of know. You've just, you're like, holding a shovel, and you're like, come on, I'm still digging. This is fucking give me what I want. <laughs> yeah, because want. then, you know, there's you, there's a very big choice that the, the, that Rodrigo makes later. Well, like, these people don't... These people have worked around each other for a really long time. Right. So why don't... Does, doesn't weird, Nora remember Rodrigo? Because, like, there are so many people that you encounter... Like, people miss each other. Yeah. Like, mm -hmm. there, are, there are disconnects that happen constantly that, like... Instead of being like, oh, I want, like, you know, maybe they would have been in love with each other or whatever. It's like, mm. no, I mean, they just sort of missed each other in a work environment that they wouldn't have noticed something that now you do. And you go like, oh, shit, do, was, you, is, w was that you? And you're like, yeah, totally. Mm. I feel closer to you than I would have ever felt because I remembered you for one second before everything sucked. Mm -hmm. Like, before we all were thinking we're going to die, mm -hmm. I, like, saw you for a second, and we should have, like, clocked each other because we should have just valued normal seconds. Mm -hmm. Whereas, like, it's not, like, the long-lost love story of... <laughs> you know, no, like, but I see, people. you know, when I see the movie, <laughs> like, it's the choice that, that Rodrigo makes later with the, with the helmet, you know, he specifically gives, you know, a helmet to, uh, to, uh, to Nora that he knows is doesn't have a problem and but at the end it's a bigger gesture because he actually takes the the Yeah, but it could have been me, one. it could have been anyone. Like he he just sacrificed himself. Like fuck. Sure. Like, but he makes sure yeah, sure. But on the movie when we're seeing when the, the impression when you see it twice. <laughs> of course not in the first one. <laughs> and it's a great storytelling cr trick actually because he sees the, the faulty one. And cut and to yeah. Nora. Here's your helmet, yeah. right? Nice guy. Yeah, nice yeah. guy. Chivalry is not dead, you know. <laughs> 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 anyway, um, Jessica, hi. How are you? <laughs> so uh, you've been in several films and, and TV series that are very demanding physically, right? You were in Game of Thrones, uh, Star Wars. Iron Fist. Is it there's is there something about like, you know, like physical, like demanding roles that 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 excite you? Well the funny thing is that when I signed, read this, I didn't think it was gonna be a physically demanding role. Oh okay. I was so fucking dumb. Oh, yeah. <laughs> like, oh I finally thought, a shot. I thought this will be yeah. like uh, easy. Just put me in a suit, we're walking around like pretending to be underwater. Oh, that's gonna be fine. Yeah, no. Yeah. The hardest the hardest film I've done by far. Well, congratulations. I can't like really uh, <laughs> like tell the the ending of this, but congratulations. Like people Thank will, you. will read through the lines uh, in this um, after they see the movie. I don't know. There's people streaming here, live, uh, watching this on TV. I guess. Yeah, which is awful. Like, it's no, very so strange. I'm going out to all the elements on TV with their like, antennas. See the movie? But, yeah. What do they do? That <laughs> in the. <laughs> No so spoilers. they've come to the cinema to watch a Q and A for a film they haven't seen, yeah, that's what I'm or is this streaming after other films? Like, what's happening right now? I don't have the answer. Who am I? Where are we? We don't need to get mad. Fortunately, about it. <laughs> um, John. Yeah. So your character Smith is the the optimist. <laughs> the optimist. <laughs> optimist. Sure. Of the group, do you think you will you will act similarly in a real life situation? 
No, I'll never act again. And, I'll, and I would not a- act uh, optim- optimistically. So just to give you a little context, when I got the part very similar uh, to Jessica, I was like, this doesn't seem so hard, you know? But the one thing I wanted to check, I called my agent. I was like, I just want to make sure that we're not actually going to be scuba diving. Like, are, we gonna be, are they going to do this James Cameron style and, like, take us yeah. into a silo filled with water and film it underwater? And they said, hang on, we're, go- we're going to check. And they got back to me and they said, no, they're doing dry for wet, which I had never heard before. I was like, dry for wet? That's great. Uh, you won't actually be underwater for any of it. And I said, that's great. Sign me up. I'll, I'll do it. And then I flew to New Orleans to start filming, and uh, the plane landed, and I turned my phone on, and there was an email from one of the ADs that was like, hey, John, we're picking you up for your first scuba lesson. What a test. And I was like, well, I quit. <laughs> <laughs> then you have to tell them I quit. And that was when I met you for the first time. Wait, you like, agree to do this? I was like, no. <laughs> And then I was like, okay. And I remember honestly being like, okay, if Kristen's scared, then I, I can be scared. I, I'm a, I can be scared too, and we can just kind of go through this. So this is a long-winded way of saying that I would not be nearly as brave or uh, or optimistic as as my character. I would be like, guys, I'm going to kill myself first <laughs> before we can go out. Uh, Have my oxygen. Here you go. Yeah, exactly. Enjoy like, it. Go on and let me know how it goes. I'll be it's staying like, behind. Like, the first time that we're allowed to be like really transparent about how difficult a movie is because it's what it's about. Usually you have to kind of highlight the sort of more positive aspects of making something where you go like, I really liked this. Like, it was hard, but at the same time, no one wants to see like fucking people complaining about making movies because it's sick. And also you're an actor, so shut the fuck up. But then you're like, wait, hold on. This really did like truly suck. But it's what the movie's about. <laughs> so you're like, actually, the yeah. most like honest and like way that really like the way of talking about it that behooves the film is to say that it was, yeah, um, so scary and like so horrific. Like we, it wasn't fun, scary. It was fucked up, scary. <laughs> yeah. We t- we toughed it out, and but we I went to my scuba lesson with you, okay. and you were you couldn't have been less afraid. Well, I was excited for the scuba aspect, but I do remember so many times on set looking over and seeing you in your sea stand hooked up like a fucking Buzz Lightyear. Oh, yeah. No, sometimes you had the thousand, you just staring (laughs) staring off into the distance. I was like, are you you okay? (laughs) They figured out a system. They didn't want us to get out of the entire suit in between certain takes. And so they're like, well, maybe if we can just keep the torso part on. And they, they organized a thing where they would hook uh, the shoulders up to wires on C stands and elevate the suit <laughs> off your shoulders. But you'd like sit there and the thing would, you'd kind of be like almost like in a, like hanging like from a hook. And I have a good picture of myself doing the crossword. Uh, yeah, I, I, have a, I have so many pictures of you doing Sudoku. Like this. Um, or Sudoku. Uh, and then there. There, you, uh, there was a certain point where I was like, <laughs> you were very itchy. I got extremely yeah, itchy. One yeah. day in particular. And when we were like, already trudging through like the thing that was whatever like our little cart was supposed to be able to move and it just fucking wasn't moving and we were like oh we just have to like shoot this thing to get it over with i looked over and i was like dude are you okay and you were just like (laughs) and then i was like fuck what's wrong are you in pain like what's going and he's like no it just fucking itches it's fucking itchy man (laughs) and he was like it was awful i've never i've never experienced an itchiness like this before or after because you're in wetsuits underneath those suits, and we had been kind of in and out of the water all day, and then we were filming stuff when you were out of water, so it started to dry against my the skin. The chlorine would it, burn. And the chlorine, and you couldn't, and then, like, you just, that thing took 15 minutes to get in and out of. So you couldn't, you, it wasn't like, I have, I have a quick, can you, I have, this, I have a scratch, can I please get this off? And take so, it, and then it'd be like, we'll, so we'll get you 20 like, minutes later. He's like, the last person in the whole world has like been in so many shitty, weird environments in order to tell a story that like he's like the last person that wants to be like, hey guys, this kind of sucks. So you see John being like, <laughs> <laughs> you got to go to your happy place. Uh, I don't want to complain, but um, <laughs> I'm fucked. <laughs> I have another question for John. Uh, oh boy. Uh, so you you kill one of the creatures and uh, and you suggest your your character Smith uh, suggests that they are called after you. Yes. Because you've shot it, and uh, so if they are called after you, uh, do you think it's a good idea to call them the Smiths? The Smiths. Yeah, I think that's good. The creatures could be called the Smiths. <laughs> All right, I like that. That was the question. That's a good one. <laughs> How long did it take you to think uh, of that one? <laughs> I was just sipping my tequila downstairs, and I said, "Oh, this is gonna be great." A fucking good time guy over here. <laughs> we're nice gonna we're moderator gonna because uh, they're watching us live, I guess. Uh, we have some question from fans uh, online. Um, here we go. 
not as funny as the previous ones. <laughs> Kristen, did you have any type of fear of water before making this film? Uh, yeah, totally. I'm like a t yeah. I I'm like um, uh, super scared of water and like very claustrophobic. So like kind of the worst candidate to oh. be someone to take to to take this on. You still but hate it. Yeah, I I mean like I think actually like. <laughs> We're joking about how hard it was to make the movie, but like I am attracted to things that are difficult, and like the only reason to do something is because it scares you. And um, in this case, it definitely was like, uh, like John, like I didn't fully think about it till the end, and so I was surprised. But at the same time, it was like absolutely what I wanted to do is like see people be pushed to a, a brink that that is dire or whatever. And um, I am so scared of swimming; <laughs> like I fucking hate it. Okay. Um, I'm just like stuff. you hug me too hard, and I'm like, <laughs> like I. It's just like too much like restriction, cluster. It's very quintessentially claustrophobic. So you're lucky you didn't do the abyss. No, I couldn't do that. That was real water. Yeah. We used to. I remember John. Like week two, when we were going, oh my god, what have we done? John texted me a link to the behind the scenes documentary for the abyss oh. and it's it was like a source of comfort yes. for us like oh. those oh guys got God. the bends like they were yeah. literally I would watch they it had it way room. worse it was like i would go home and watch the making of the abyss in my hotel room and be like ah <laughs> worst thing you could do wow i've got it easy yeah <laughs> okay i that have one like more for Kristen. <laughs> uh what Kristen? what what are the three things you would bring with you if you were going to be stuck seven miles under the ocean Probably William Eubanks because he's like the most enthusiastic motherfucker I've ever, ever met in my life. <laughs> One of the things. We'd be screwed. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we'd do like, we'd escape five different types of ways and we would still wouldn't And make still it. would die. But we'd like drink a bunch of Coors Light and be like, yeah. honestly, dude, I feel like we both did a really good job. And <laughs> fuck this thing. <laughs> yeah. There was a lot of Coors Lights and some tequila on pa paddings, the long day. Paddings on the back. <laughs> yeah, it's okay, dude. Fuck it, dude. And we did the best we could. Now, one for Jessica. Uh, what emojis would you use to describe this film? Oh, my gosh. From I would use the emoji where the head is exploding, and then I'd use the octopus emoji, and then I'd probably use the... Oh, wait, no. I can't dead. Uh, the, yeah, the dead, the dead emoji. Dead emoji. Dead. Very good. For John... Uh, what was the hardest stunt to do in the film? The hardest about that. stunt. There was one day. That, it's funny because it's a it's a it's a short little moment in in the film, but I I get I get yanked away by one of the Smiths, and um, <laughs> I get pulled into this like cavern, and they have to go and and pull me out. And it was it was one of a week where I was just being dragged around, like I was on the ground, just being dragged around in the suit all day. <laughs> And there was one where, like, the suit got, they were pulling me out, and the suit got stuck on a rock, but they didn't know it, and they kept yanking, and I had to, like, I screamed. I was like, my nice. arm is coming out of its socket. <laughs> oh, no. And then uh, and then Vincent Cassell realized, he was like, he said one day, he was like, you know, we could just put it, he was like, we could just put, like, a, a, a beard on a stake and stick it in the helmet, and nobody would know that it wasn't John. <laughs> And I remember Vin thinking, Vincent I was Cassell, like, why haven't we done that? Pioneer fucking, like, old school fucking French filmmaker. He's like, do you guys, you know what? I feel like you could just put a fucking sandbag at the end of the thing. And we just, like, drag him across the... So like Nouvelle it. Bag. Like, like Nouvelle like, like, Bag. That's, what, dude, uh, that's how we do it. Yeah, totally. You're like, hey, John, um, go home. Yeah. You're like, yeah. <laughs> then I did. So... Uh, <laughs> Was a guy emoji? Right. We're done with that. Uh, Mamudu, uh, unfortunately, this one this, this one has been like sort of answered. <laughs> but how heavy was the suit? Oh, how okay. Um, it's about a hundred pounds. So, um, but the main thing I think about the suits was that it just kind of pinched at certain areas. So, aside from the weight, it was just like an odd areas and just what like odd areas things. are you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> uh, like your shoulders, you know. <laughs> right. <laughs> And I guess that uh, uh, takes us to our last Instagram question, which is: uh, Were there any movies that you were that were your inspiration in making this film? Uh, all of, I mean, a lot of movies. I guess there's like a I, these guys know. I just babble about other movies all day long. So, um, but obviously Ridley Scott's a huge uh, visual influence to me. The Abyss is a great uh, underwater action adventure film. It 
this I think is a lot scarier than that film. But uh, you know, the the mm -hmm. characters and what they're going through and all those things. Um, yeah, I, a lot of it just sort of comes out of what you end up shooting. So, as a filmmaker, I, I'm very interested in this because you know, there's I there's there's a point of contamination where, yeah, of course you you are inspired by this movie, but do you watch them before you're shooting, or you rather like leave them? Honestly, what you remember of them? Yeah, I've never seen Deep Star Six. I've never seen Leviathan. I know a lot of people mention those films, but I think they just mention them because they're underwater. But I've actually never seen them. Um, and then when you hear people saying, oh, this could be like that, then I don't like to watch them because I don't want to know what, mm -hmm. you know, what, I don't want to take too much from those things. I want to take from what I'm already inspired by. And, and usually that it goes down to specific designers. We did a lot of stuff in this movie that was actually taken from things like the construction of Hoover Dam and the PLA and the, the art projects that were going on during the um, New Deal uh, that just had to do with like the way I just feel like the farther you go into the future the more history you're sitting on top of so we took a lot of weird inspiration from big public arts projects and mm -hmm. whatnot so well I want to thank you Will and thank you guys thank you all the cast Kristen John Jessica and Mamuju um that's about it. Thank Thanks you, coming, Alamo you Trap House. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you all for being thank here. You. Thank you, everyone watching on Inst on uh, 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 live stream, and you can see underwater in theaters this Friday, January tenth. Uh, thank you and good night. Yeah.